What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, it's Jacob Lee Party, AKA the AFL Fantasy Freak. In this video, I'm gonna be covering all the rookies across all the zones. So defender, midfield, ruck, forward. Everything you guys need to know, all the ones you should be starting with, and all the ones you should be looking to favor. Starting off in defense, as you guys know, defense this year, we got pretty slim pickings. Everyone's trying to find options as a defender rookie this year. And personally, I've gone with the strategy of having none on my field in defense. Uh, the prospects don't look to be great scorers and have great job security back there. But the first one we'll talk about is Lockie Jones. So Lockie Jones for Port Adelaide, uh, before Amy series, I thought he was an absolute lock for round one, but he only managed the half game in the Amy series. So I'm not sure what that really says about his job security or whether or not he's a certainty for round one. But nevertheless, he scored well, albeit against Adelaide, who were absolutely fucking terrible. He should be a good, decent option back there. But at 240k, you have to have him on the field. He's too expensive to have on the bench. So depending on how you guys are willing to structure this year is going to determine whether or not you think he's a starting option for your side. Uh, the second guy is Connor Iden. So Connor played G uh, for GWS. And to be fair, going into the game, I had limited expectations based on what I had heard of him as a player and little pieces I'd seen of him. But to my surprise, he was actually pretty good. He looked comfortable out there. He managed to get involved in the switch plays and his defense looked pretty sound as well. So from a coach's perspective, I feel like Leon Cameron would have been pretty happy with his performance. I think once again, similar to Lockie Jones, 221K, you can maybe have him on the bench, but I think there's some cheaper options that should be able to score similar to him. So for me personally, he's not one that I'll be going with. Nick Cox. So Nick Cox for Essendon. He does have defender forward. So he's got that dual position there, but he looks very raw. He looks like he's going to need a couple years to really fill out his frame and and settle into a, a full-time position where he can give value to the Bombers. It looks like he possibly could play early and he's playing on a wing position uh, where he drifts forward and back. So he's kind of covering the whole ground. Uh, he's pretty agile and, and an athletic type for his size, but the scoring's not gonna be there. And at 256K, he can't be an option. Joel Hamling for Frio. So Joel Hamling, He's not necessarily a rookie. He's been a while, around a while, uh, for a while. Uh, he's a key position player, so that's a, usually a big no. Um, but his job security should be pretty decent, especially with Rory Lobb's recent injury. Frio are going to be scraping for tools, so he could be one that they even experiment and throw forward. But... Being that key position player, 249k is probably not one you should be considering heavily. Then we've got Heath Chapman. So Heath Chapman does actually look like a pre pretty decent type. Only managed to come on in the last quarter for Freo, so I don't think he's in their round one calculations. But he certainly should be a good downgrade option during the season and one to keep your eyes out for. Jack Payne for Brisbane. Similar to Hamling, key position, don't really like him. Um, but if you do need someone for your field, he should be a safe option to get games, uh, but not won't be the greatest scorer. Jordan Butts. So Jordan Butts' output in the Amy series was actually decent. Should get games early, I think. His job security is 
somewhat decent. Uh, his scoring probably be similar to Payne, but he's cheaper. So I think that if you, and at 207k, he could even be a bench option, considering we're probably going to be scraping the barrel in that area. Chris Burgess. So Chris comes in 190k. Uh, won't be a scorer, probably won't get a game. Uh, interesting, Gold Coast used him in the ruck when he did come on, which was halfway through the last quarter in the Amy series. I think they were just had him there to give Wits a little bit of a rest. But he won't be a scorer. He's proved in the past that I think I had him last year or two years ago and he made about 30 fucking K, so he's not an option. Harry Sharp, 186 defender mid, has that dual position, but I think he's actually still in school, so I think he's doing his year 12 studies this year, and because of that, he's probably not going to be available to play during the year, but from what I saw in the time that he did play in the Amy series, he looks like he's capable. Uh, he did some really nice things from a team perspective that the coach would have really liked, so I think that's definitely got him in the good books. Sam DeConning. So this one's a little bit interesting. Uh, he spent a fair bit of time in the ruck. Uh, he's 170K. He looks like the type of player Geelong are gonna use as a key forward. But with Reese Stanley now looking like he's gonna be right for round one, I don't think DeConning is gonna be in the side come round one. And if he is, his job security is not gonna be that great. And then we've got Kieran Briggs. So another one with dual position, defender forward status. Looks a decent type, played majority in the ruck, but I think Matt Flynn is gonna be the number one ruck at the Giants. And therefore Briggs probably won't make the side. I think GWS are gonna be picking between one of the two. Then we've got a popular one. This guy's in lots of teams. Uh, that's Thomas Highmore. So he's 182K. Uh, with Frawley now injured for an extended time, I think Highmore possibly gets a crack round one. Um, if he does, he'll be in my side to start with. I think he's got good scoring potential. He looks like a decent interceptor. Uh, with good ability off halfback. And from the time that I saw of him on the field, he looked like he's settled. He looks like he's ready to go at AFL level and he should be somewhat decent of a scorer. So for me, he's one that will be in my side if he's selected. Then we have Jacob Kaczynski. So he's pretty much a lock for round one. Uh, I think he kicked seven goals in the Amy series game. My only concern with him is that they do have Lewis and they'd have Gunston as well to come into the squad potentially. So Hawthorne have other key forwards that they can use and he's probably only one poor game off getting dropped. But he is 170k and he's going to play. So for me, he's the one that's also sitting on my bench. A couple of other names that probably won't get a crack round one, but are ones to look out for going forward as mid-season downgrade options. We have Will Gold from the Swans, Harry Edwards from West Coast, Trent Bianco, Josh Worrell, Liam Stocker, and Connor Manager. So those are guys that I think can get a crack at some point in the year and probably can be suitable downgrade options for you guys. All right, so moving on to the midfielders. First up, we have Will Phillips. So Will was highly regarded in the early parts of the preseason, but he looks like one that's slightly behind, not having played any footy last year. He should be a decent scorer when given the opportunity, but I don't think he's in calculations for round one. Braden Campbell. So Braden's a guy that has dual position status mid forward. He's settled in high, uh, nicely at half back. So he looks to have a good role in the side and also great job security. I think his scoring potential is pretty good. He's 
scored 57 from 80% in the Amy series, which is probably roughly where I see him averaging this season. Whether you think it's worth paying up for the extra job security, I currently don't have him in my side, but he's definitely a worthy option. Archie Perkins. So Archie looks like he needs some work before gaining a debut opportunity, in my opinion. Uh, he's highly rated, so Essendon might just throw him in straight away, but I don't think that will be the case. He did look to have decent hunt around the contest, so his contested work looked pretty good. His tackle pressure was pretty good. Uh, he could be an option providing he has dual position status. Tanner Bruin. So Tanner played a great game, obviously kicked the four goals. Uh, in my opinion, he looked to be a very similar player to Toby Green. Um, with the depth that GWS possessed through the middle of the ground, I think Tanner definitely gets an opportunity round one, but it'll be in a forward role. So whether you want to pay 248k for someone that's going to be playing in a forward role as a midfield selection, personally, I think he's probably a pass, but he should score relatively well. So he's an option. Then we have Tom Powell. So Tom Powell's one that's been heavily on everyone's radar. Super numbers as a junior. Averaged 119 at State League. Uh, similar to Bruin, I think Tom has a spot in the side, but it will be in a forward role. And with Anderson, Cunnington, Polek, Jumont, all these names to come into the side... I don't think there's really any opportunity for Powell to get much time up the field. He scored 64 from 67% time on ground, so the points per minute numbers there are pretty great. But 43 of those points came in the second quarter when he was able to go and push up the field a bit more. So for me, I think his role was not that great. And North Melbourne are pretty shit as well, to be honest. So I don't think he's a lock that everyone's saying, but he's certainly a reasonably safe option that you can expect somewhat decent scores from. Then we have Jake Bowie. So he looks to be a pretty classy player with good ability, uh, particularly on the outside. And I think Melbourne have plans to use him as a damaging half-back type. Uh, he could be interesting seeing how the footy's been played so far. It seems like a pretty handy position to have. Um, he played 57% for 27 points, which is nothing special. Um, and he's not one that I'll be selecting, but I'll be keeping an eye on just to see how he fits in and possibly if he gets a game round one. The next bloke is Sam Berry. So Sam, I was super impressed with in the first uh, hit out, the first practice match, and also in a club simulation game that I watched. He was one of the standouts. Great tackle pressure. Um, he seems to be rated pretty highly at the Crows. Um, he got given 42% game time for 19 points in the Amy series, which isn't too great. But I think he's one that I'll be selecting. I don't think he gets a game round one. So he's one that I'm willing to jump on when he gets given the opportunity. Then we have Charlie Lazaro. So Charlie from North Melbourne. Uh, the coaching staff and the commentary staff hyped the shit out of him before before the Amy series. Started the game and I wasn't even sure he was out there. Honestly, looked so hard to find this guy. And next minute I hear he's been subbed off. So I don't know what the fuck he did to get 14 points. But for me, he's not an option. Uh, Phoenix Spicer. So Phoenix... Mid forward, looks to be a really exciting type. He was probably, I mean, everyone knows how fucking shit it is watching North Melbourne play, but 
he brought some excitement to the game. It was the best part of of the game for mine when he came over, uh, came on the field. Uh, he only got the quarter, but he looked pretty special. Uh, he looks to be an impact player. Uh, he looks pretty raw as well, so I don't know how much opportunity he gets. Um, he probably gets games at some stage, and with the mid-forward 188k, he could be a downgrade option if you're desperate during the season. Tyler Brockman, so small forward, super pressure. Uh, he kicked three goals in the first quarter, which pretty much locked his spot in the side for round one. He scored 69 from 76% time on ground, but 43 of these points came in the first quarter where he bagged the three snags. So I can't see him having that great scoring potential. And... I think he could be a decent bench option, but he's not one that I'd have on the field. Zane True. So, True plays for West Coast. Uh, he's had a solid preseason, and he looks to be a great contested type with good hands around the stoppage, with also a highlight in uh, tackle pressure as well. So, he should be a good scorer. His junior numbers, where he averaged 105 in state league, sort of suggest this. But he's probably not in calculations for round one. He'll probably sit on West Coast emergency list and provide midfield depth, um, given we get further injuries in that area. He managed 30 points from 26% time on ground. So he's... Points per minute were pretty high, and he's one that if there's an opening for him at any stage, he's worth getting on at the basement price. Jackson Mead. So Jackson was, he's always been one that I've been pretty fond on. Um, I've always liked him. I didn't get a crack last year, which somewhat surprised me a little bit, but he comes into this year basement price now because of that. Um... He might be best 22, probably not, um, but Port do like him. So uh, he scored 37 from 41% time on ground, which is encouraging signs. And I think he's worth uh, chucking in your side if he's selected. Will Martin. So Will Martin for the Tigers only managed a quarter. He's... It's traditionally been pretty hard to crack the Richmond side as a youngster. So I don't think he finds a spot round one. But his numbers as a junior were exceptional. So his ability to score is there. Um, it just comes down to job security, really. So even if he is selected, being a Richmond player... I'm not sure if he's one that I'll be bringing in depending on the circumstance and what role he's filling in the side. Uh, the next player is Riley Collier-Dawkins, so pretty much exact same proposition to Will Martin. Uh, great inside mid, got given a little bit of time on ground, 39%, but his CBA usage was pretty high. So I think Richmond intend to use him as an on-bowler if he's given the opportunity. Um, Riley definitely will get games at some stage, but similar to Martin, job security issues. But I think he's one that I'll be willing to take a punt on if he is selected at some stage. Then we have James Jordan for Melbourne. So James is a popular selection. He's in quite a few sides. Uh, he scored 49 from 79% time on ground. It looks good on paper, but in all honesty, I didn't like James's performance in the Amy series. I thought his hands around stoppage were pretty poor. He fumbled the ball quite a lot, and he also made some pretty bad uh, skill errors. So I think he's one with Viney, Brayshaw, Oliver, all these midfielders to come into the side. I think his job security is actually pretty poor. And although Melbourne rate him and will most likely give him an opportunity round one, if he has one, one or two bat poor games, 
then I can see him getting kicked out of the side. So for me, I'm not even selecting him as a bench option. But depending on your structure and the way you've set your team up, if you need another basement price player, then he's one to chuck on the bench. Lachlan McNeil. So Lachlan played small forward and he looked all right. Uh, the dogs have a pretty strong side, so I can't imagine his job security is that great. And I'm not even sure where he sits in the pecking order for a game round one. So he played a, a full game in the Amy series, but I don't think he'll make the, the best 22. Lachlan Bramble didn't show that much and wasn't really that influential. Only time I noticed him was when he was kicking for goal. He scored the 41 points from 85% time on ground. Um, and the fact that he did manage to play a full game in a weak side like Hawthorne is positive in terms of his chances to debut in round one. So he's one to keep an eye on, but personally, I won't be selecting him. Nick Shipley. So Shipley's a name that's been floating around for a while now. Didn't really show much. Wasn't really that influential um, only got given the 20% game time. Um, he's probably not in the plans for games early, so he's not one that I would consider. Considering he hasn't played a game in the last two years. Errol Goulden. So Errol's one that's super popular amongst the fantasy community. Um, he's probably the number one rookie option for mine. Uh, similar to Tom Powell, Goulden will be restricted to a forward role to start the season, but I think his potential to maybe push up the field is a little bit higher considering Sydney uh, trying to develop a lot of their younger midfielders. So I think they'll throw some names through there at some stages. So he could be one that gets opportunities up the ground. He looks to have silky set of skills on him and the way the game's moving he looks like that perfect player that can really take advantage of the new rules hit targets up and whilst he was playing half forward he was getting up the ground quite a bit so i think his scoring potential is pretty good um his job security i think is pretty good but there is a slight chance that he might not make the round one team. I think he will, but just be take this in mind so that you have a backup plan if he's not named round one. Connor Downey. So Connor has a wing role at the Hawks and I think his job security is pretty high. Hawthorne are pretty depleted in wingers. Um, I think his scoring potential is not that great. A lot of people are opting to play him on the field. Personally, I consider Connor just a bench option. And with his high job security, he'll be a good bench option for you. So he'll make a lot of cash. His scores probably won't be too great, but at least you'll have cover there every week. Anthony Scott, mature age recruit for the Bulldogs. He could nab a spot in the back line albeit he's a mid-forward, so he looked to be active and he got involved providing impact on the game. I think he'll play round one, and he's an option to have on the bench, especially with that handy dual position status. I'm just going to breeze over a few names that are relevant to consider later in the year. So we have Luke Pedler, Nakaya Cockatoo, Finlay McRae, Corey Durden, Thompson Dow, Devin Robertson, Luke Valenti, Jay Rantau, Hugo Ralph Smith, Eli Smith, and Jack Ginovan. So all those names, I think, are good potential candidates to bring into your side, but I don't think they're ready to play round one. So just keep your eyes peeled for those guys when they're given an opportunity. The rookie ruck department is usually a dead area that we're usually scraping for someone just for our R3 spot that's even going to be playing. But this year it looks to provide a huge talking point. So I'll go over the ruck options we have. 
So firstly, inflated price, but we have Riley Tilthorpe. So 268K does have dual position ruck forward, but with Riley O'Brien just hitting his peak, you'd think that Tilthorpe's way behind in the pecking order and Adelaide also have quite a lot of good tall options up forward. So he'll probably get games, but his scoring potential won't be that great. So at the inflated price, I wouldn't worry about him. Then we have Nathan Vardy for West Coast. So 268K as well. And with West Coast coming out and saying that Nick Nat won't be playing extra minutes, I think it opens the door for West Coast to play two ruck. And with Bailey Williams injured to start the year, I think that spot has to go to Vardy. But he's not going to be the number one ruck, obviously. So he'll be taking Nick Nat's rest time, if you will. And I don't think he's going to be given enough opportunity to score well to justify the inflated price tag, considering there's so many 170k options that look viable. Then we have Matt Flynn. So this one's probably the biggest lock out of the next few guys I'm going to speak about, but 170k didn't play in the Amy series due to ankle soreness, but I think he was right to go. I think it was just a bit of bullshit just to give Kieran Briggs a look in the ruck so GWS could just see and weigh up their options. He's going to play round one and he's going to be their number one ruck. So he's a lock. And depending on how you want to approach with your strategy this year, I don't mind the idea of having Flynn on your field. Paul Hunter, so another 170k ruck. Uh, Radden's already confirmed that he will be playing round one with Ryder taking personal leave and Marshall injured with a foot. So he's one that you have to have, whether it be on your, your bench or your utility spot. He's guaranteed to play games and he should be in for a, at least the first few rounds. Lloyd Meek, similar to Hunter, uh, Darcy's returning from a knee injury and Lobb's just gone out with a knee injury. So because of how well Meek played in the Amy series, I think he's guaranteed for a round one spot. Um, but he does come up against Max Gorn in round one. So I'd just keep that in mind. I wouldn't be putting him on the field, but he's also one that you can chuck on the bench and he should be pretty safe scoring option. Then the last option for a ruck is probably Tom Fullerton. So ruck forward, uh, which is handy, and McStay being injured means that he should get games uh, at the start of the year. It is a little bit concerning that he did get no ruck time and all the forward stoppages Danaher rucked. So Danaher looks to be the backup ruckman for the Lions which means that Fullerton will be restricted to a key forward role only. So this isn't great for his scoring potential. And despite the fact that he has the dual position with guys like Meek, Hunter, Flynn available for your ruck and other forward options that I'll get to in a second, I don't think that Fullerton's really an option, even though he will play early. A couple other ruck names to keep note of. So we have Josh Tracy, Samson Ryan, Nick Bryan, and Tom Campbell. So those are some guys that you should look out for. In particular, Tom Campbell. I really like, like him, but with Goldstein, he's probably not going to really get a crack unless there's some injuries in that. So just keep an eye out for those guys. So up forward, we have Logan McDonald. So... High, high draft pick and was one of Sydney's shining lights in that game. So he came on in the third quarter and honestly changed the shape of their movement going forward. Super influence on the game and I think he showed enough in just under a half to secure a spot for round one. He looks a star of the future, but being a young key forward and having an inflated price tag, he's not an option to start with in Fantasy Classic. Oliver Henry, so 
was talked up early in the preseason. He's clearly rated by the Pies, but from what I saw, I don't think he's that great uh, from a fantasy perspective. He dropped three marks in the first quarter of their game, so his hands weren't very clean, and that was probably just nervous knowing he was playing for a round one spot. I think he will get a round one spot, but 27 from 72% time on ground is not enough, and it inflated price of 238k there's better options out there r2 bossem novoluga g something like that sorry r2 for butchering your name mate but i thought at a new club he'd uh flourish at north melbourne having not really been given a look in at the pies uh, it was looking like North were going to trial him off half-back, but I don't think he's really shown enough to break into that side, considering they've thrown Zeeble back there, they've got Young, so there's options down there, and I don't think he's good enough to get a game round one. Ned Cahill. So this one I am interested on. I really liked the look of him in the first preseason game, but he was quiet in the Amy series. Um... He does have a good role off half-back. So his score of 36 from 83% isn't anything special, but he has a good role, and I think Essendon do like him in the squad in that position. So I think his job security is decent. Uh, he's one that I certainly have my eye on. He's not currently in my team, but he's one that I'll be bringing in early if he starts well. Will Kelly... So, Will Kelly looks to have broken his collarbone, so I think he's going to be out for a while. Therefore, he's not an option. Francis Evans. So, Geelong seemed to rate this guy. He's in the mix, but he's probably outside the 22. And being Geelong, super depth, super strong side, contending for a premiership. The likelihood that Evans gets much opportunity is pretty slim. So even if he's named at some point, I probably won't be bringing in because he's likely to get dropped in a one, two, three weeks anyway. So for me, he's not really an option this year. Dominic Bedendo. So Dominic played 62% of the game, but he's not a fantasy type. He only managed 14 points, so he's one that I would certainly be avoiding. Alec Waterman, 170k, forward only. Uh, looked good in the practice game. He kicked four goals, which secured his spot on the list. Um, and was looking like Essendon were really rated him. He was suiting to be a strong candidate for round one. But then he's only managed the one quarter in the Amy series. So I'm not sure if they were just managing him or whatnot. But based off that, he's potentially just outside the 22. Um, he could be an option to bring in at basement price when he does get a game. Chad Warner. This guy, in my opinion, was the most impressive rookie player that I watched over the Amy series. Um, his ability on the outside was phenomenal. So Sydney looked to play him as a winger, but they also chucked him in the guts and played him at half forward too. Um, yeah, he's a lock for me. He's on my field and he's should have pretty solid job security based off what I saw of him. He looks to be a very important cog in the Sydney side and someone I think they are looking to develop further this season. So for me, he's a must have. Miles Bergman. Don't quote me on this, but I think he scored the most points out of any rookies in the Amy series, but he's still not certain to get a game round one. So Port Adelaide, super strong side. I think it's a coin flip, but I think he probably gets him. His job security is always going to be a little bit iffy, uh, especially with Hamish Hartlett and Trent McKenzie to come in. Uh, the halfback role where he will be playing is a spot that certainly has pressure on it. I think his scoring potential is too high and therefore it outweighs the job security side of things. 
I think if his name round one, you start with him and you deal with that issue later down the line if he does get dropped because I think there's too much cash to be made here. So he's one that I have and I also have on the field. James Rose, shining light for the Crows in a game where there wasn't really that many. I mean, it's fucking Adelaide we're talking about. The, they're fucking shit. He scored 58 as a small forward, so didn't kick a goal to manage that score, which is great signs. Uh, he looked dangerous up forward, and he's someone Adelaide want to get the hand, uh, ball in the hands of. So I think his job security is high, and he's an option. He's one that I'll probably be starting with on my bench, even though he's 26K more than basement. I think that he's definitely an option. And then... We also have Harrison Jones, 170k, pretty much a Max King 2.0. Big uh, key forward, but there's plenty of opportunity at the Bombers, and his score of 46 from 75% indicates that he probably won't be that, that great of a scorer, but not that bad either. So I think at basement, he's going to be a safe option that will guarantee you cover each week. And therefore, he's one that I'd highly consider. The only other name I'd really note in the forward department is John Patton. So, fuck knows what's going on with him. It's fucking all over the place. But if he decides to come back to footy, then good on him. And he's probably, probably one that I'd chuck in my side because he's cheap as fuck. Alright, so that's my analysis on this year's rookies. If you've made it this far, you're a bloody legend. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you've enjoyed this content. I'll flash my rookie selection somewhere on the screen so you guys can see what I'm rocking with. Until next time, good luck homies, and I'll catch you in the next one. I'm about my pledge, bitch, I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quick to save my peace, I'm so after school special. She brainy.